Hi, uh, my name is Peter Landon. I'm a PLM for the NSP group at Nokia. And today we're doing a demo at OFC for coherent routing. And what we're going to demonstrate is a, uh, a single 400ZR channel uh, through a FOTEM system. And we're going to focus on the management system and how NSP makes it easy to configure a uh, 400ZR link. So what's unique about the NSP is that it allows you to configure from the IP layer a ZR link but it instructs the underlying optical controller to actually do the configuration of the plugs end to end. And by doing this, you avoid uh, introducing an alien wavelength into the optical infrastructure um, because the optical controller has full control over the end to end parameters, power levels, channels, etc. And it can be triggered by the, the NSP via TAPI. The NFMT uses the open config model and configures via NetConf Yang and the NSP can use NetConf Yang or SNMP to configure the routers. So we'll go ahead and look at the schematic. This is in the NFMT uh, management uh, screen, and it essentially shows you the, the components of the demo. We've got the router uh, going through the MUX, DMUX, uh, the booster amp, preamp, MUX, DMUX, and then returns to the other router and then a return path as well. From an NSP perspective, it's a web-based uh, platform using web apps, and it's a single sign-on. So once you've signed on, you have access to all of the applications available. Today, we're going to focus on network supervision, um, the NFMT optical controller, and the cross-domain coordinator. So the NSP is a uh, a web app, a uh, web app based uh, platform. And you can see these uh, number of applications that are available. It's a single sign on, so once you're signed in, you have access to all these applications without having to sign on again. What we're going to focus on today is the network supervision application, the NFMT for optical control, and the cross domain coordinator. What we're looking at here is, is the supervisor for the network. And this is the NE list that's available in this view. And this gives you a list of all of the NEs in, in your network. From here, you can look at the equipment inventory. And this is all available through API as well. Uh, but you can drill down within this view to see all the ports and all, this, all the cards in the shelf. We'll focus on the card slot shelf. And you can drill down all the way to the card that has, houses the four, uh, 400ZR plug QSF PDD. And you can see there's information on the information pane related to uh, the, the, uh, the card as well as manufacturing details. And this can be used all the way down to the actual plug. The NSP is also uh, multi-vendor friendly. Uh, and this is where you would add a uh, new optical controller. Um, from a, another optical vendor to allow control of, uh, of different vendors' optical networks and different domains. Going back to the cross-domain coordinator, this is where the NSP pulls together the IP and the optical domains. It visualizes the under, optical underlay by, uh, by gathering the topology through the TAPI interface. And it makes the association between the uh, IP node uh, port through the optical underlay. And it presents it in a network map like this. You can click on any link within the map and actually see highlighting of the link and do bottom-up navigation on that link, where you can look at any optical services that are running on the link, uh, LSPs, layer two, IP services, and IGP links. So once the link is set up, there are a number of different views you can use. Um, we, can sh we can show it in the multi-layer view. It gives you a three-dimensional view of the different layers in the connection. Now, you wouldn't use this for a full network view, but if you're debugging or want to analyze a particular link layer interconnect, it's very useful. So at the bottom, you can see these are the physical elements of the connection. You've got uh, the first router called R3. On the other side, the SR2S. And then in the middle, you can see the optical ILAs and get information on those. In the middle layer, we see the, uh, 
the optical service. And so this is where uh, you can get information on the optical service that's running between these two links, ports. And at the very top, you can see it, we have the link layer. And this is essentially the layer two connection between the two router ports over the optical infrastructure. So what we'll do now is uh, go through setting up uh, ZR Link. So within your link layer interconnect screen, uh, you simply hit the plus button, you give the link a description, you give the optical service a name, you select 400 gig as the signal type, and when you do that, it actually brings up a, a selection of the type of ZR plug you're using, whether it's a, a 400 ZR standard or a 400 ZR plus. And by selecting the, uh, the type of plug, all of the information that's required to configure that plug is contained in the, uh, in the software, in the database, and that gets provisioned automatically. Lastly, you, uh, you simply pick the endpoints by, by node. In this case, we would pick an SR2S, and we would configure the port. And do the same on the other side. Hit Create, and the NSP will instruct NFMT to configure the plugs on both ends. So now that we've got the, uh, the, link, the link layer connected, you can actually dive into the, to the optical controller, in this case NFMT, to see all of the details and all of the uh, capabilities of the underlying controller. As a, a good example of something you might want to look at is the optical power on that particular link. And this is, a, this is a measurement from the optical hardware using optical channel monitors that give you a, a view of the power at every stage. And this is done in real time. And you can see here, uh, for example, the launch power of this plug is minus 13 uh, dBm. And it gives you the power levels at every stage. So in closing, uh, the NSP offers a, uh, a very powerful way to provision ZR links uh, that utilize an underlying optical controller to handle all of the optical details that are required for photoms, rotoms, hybrid networks, um, and it provides uh, intent-based provisioning to ensure that you have a, a single source of truth for your network. Thank you.